10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! What? What? Yeah, it's 2019 and everything that every developer is talking about is TypeScript. TypeScript, 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 script, TypeScript. Yeah! TypeScript, 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 shut the f this video is brought to you by Twizy and Twizy is Bro, isn't Twizy like your app? You cannot sponsor your own video with your own app. Why not? It's my video, it's my app, I'm gonna do whatever the fuck I want. So Twizy is an app for direct messages for Twitter, a native app that you can use on your Mac without opening twitter.com and you can also click in your menu bar somewhere right here to post a new tweet. So you just click on the menu bar, a little pop-up comes out, you write your tweet, you click send and you're done. So back to the topic, should you use TypeScript in 2019? The answer is... It depends. That's it. End of the video. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Roll the credits. So before we talk about whether you should use or you shouldn't use TypeScript in 2019, let's talk about how it all began. So approximately 4.54 billion years ago. No! Oh, not, not that one? Okay. It was the summer of 1990. No! I have no idea when was TypeScript created. So let's talk about when did people start adopting TypeScript. So I wanted to migrate from Angular 1 to something else. Yes, I said the A word. And yes, I sometimes get ugh, like bad dreams from Angular 1 code, but yeah, from Angular 1 we needed to move to something else and I personally, when I saw TypeScript in the Angular 2 code, I was like, this is super weird, I don't want to jump to this, okay, I want to jump to another framework like React because it's just JavaScript, I don't want to learn TypeScript and it turns out that years later they can say they were right. As we see these other frameworks, they want to integrate TypeScript, they're not TypeScript exclusive, they'll still let you write code in JavaScript, but they want to make it nice and they want to make it compatible with TypeScript. We see this sudden trend of everyone using TypeScript and I guess we owe Angular one thing. Don't get too smug, but you got one thing right. You were right about TypeScript. And of course there's gonna be someone in the comments being like, Well actually it wasn't that hard to use TypeScript with React before. You just had to go in your webpack setup and do the... Yeah, and do the the what? The jumping out of the window? Oh, I'm just gonna use React and TypeScript. I'm just gonna go in the webpack. No one says I'm just gonna go in the webpack config, alright? There's only one person who says I'm just gonna go in the webpack config. So as we know, in the React world, Create React App is the new webpack. You can just deal with it because whatever they decide to put into create react app you upgrade the package the, the the react scripts package and you just use it that's it you don't learn webpack anymore you don't mess with webpack anymore and recently they added tab script support so now you can just change any file from javascript to typescript extension and your app will just continue working which is like pff, it's it's great actually and i think that's the number one reason why people started using it more and more because it's just easy you change one file eh, actually if you look at this tweet you change one file and suddenly you need the other file, oh it has an import, so those in that import has another import and so on and so forth and suddenly half of your project is in TypeScript. Eh? Now let me try to answer the actual question because it's easy right now to change any file from JavaScript to TypeScript. Should you actually go and do it and start converting your project to TypeScript? No, 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 no. You have to have a really, an absolutely amazing reason in order for you to start doing that, okay? I had a good reason to change one of my projects. So if you follow me on Twitter, which I'm gonna put here, somewhere here, you're gonna notice a pattern and, and since January 1st, I'm also one of those TypeScript, 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 TypeScript people all the time, right? Because I got myself in a situation when one of my projects got too huge and I couldn't, like I was making mistakes all the time. In my forms, in my queries, in my mutations, constantly mistakes with just a typo or a wrong property on this and that. Just open the browser, refresh. So, so the entire cycle of making a mistake, opening the browser, refreshing the page, looking into the console, seeing the error, and it's just a typo when you go back. So those five minute errors just accumulated to more and more and they took more and more of my time. So I decided this needs to stop. 
but you can notice I mentioned mutations and queries. So I'm using GraphQL. So what I'm saying is it made a lot of sense for me because I already have the types. When you're writing GraphQL, you have a schema which looks something like this. And from this schema, you can automatically generate types. So if you have a user in your schema that has name, surname, and age of certain types, you just go and you do npm run, types generate whatever your command is and it's gonna output TypeScript types for you which is gonna look something like this. So the idea is I'm already writing types once so anytime I change some of my models on the back end automatically it's gonna reflect the change on the front end. So on the back end if I change the user and uh, I remove the surname property but on the client I'm querying the surname property somewhere my code on the client is gonna break and it's gonna say you don't have this property anymore. So you just go and delete it. So you fix most of the error at compile time instead of fixing them at runtime because TypeScript can know what types are missing from the queries and mutations and so on. When you submit a mutation, that means when you post some data to the server, let's say you create a new post. If you forget a mandatory field or something like that, the types will cover it for you and they're gonna tell you, nope, you cannot submit this without putting surname or password or confirm password or whatever. So you're catching many, many errors. But what I wanna say, the effort that I did to get that is nothing. I already have the schema on the backend. I have to write the schema in order to have backend in GraphQL, right? And I don't do any extra work to rewrite these types from scratch. So let me be honest with you. If I was using REST API instead of GraphQL, I would rather spend the day staring at an Angular 2 logo instead of writing the types that the REST API will need for querying data and for posting data. You would have to write everything manually. With GraphQL, you just generate the types from your schema and you have them. Every time the schema changes, you get the new changes. That's amazing. So another reason that I wanted this is I'm already using MobX and MobX State Tree on the client for state management. Let me ask you a question. If you haven't tried MobX or MobX State Tree for state management, I can understand, I can understand. If you're paid by the hour, you, you want to write Redux, right? But other than that, what are you doing to yourself? Just go ahead and try MobX or MobX State Tree. It's it's so easy, it's amazing for client state management. So when I'm writing vanilla MobX, which means just JavaScript classes, you can just assign types to the properties of those classes, which means automatically everything is typed. When I type my MobX class, and when I try to use it in React, I can just know what properties I can use and what methods on them I can use and so on and so forth. If I'm using MobX state tree, it has these reflection methods or whatever, where you can take a MobX state tree and from it, you can just generate the type. I'm generating the types from my GraphQL server. I'm generating the types from my client state management library. And I'm left with almost nothing. I don't write types manually, you know? I write types for the props of my components. I write types for the props of my style components, but I don't write anything that regarding state management or regarding the backend and, and so on. Like everything is automatically generated, which makes my work way, way faster. If you had to write all of this from scratch, then it's a bad idea. I don't know. I work alone, okay? I work alone and maybe it sounds like a bad idea for me, but I can already see the, the enormous value that TypeScript might have if you work in a huge team, which most of you do, you're not all freelancers. When I, when I was still freelancing, we adopted Flow just before I left the project, and I could already see how, how much advantage it gave us. You could know what the other person did. If you're just writing vanilla JavaScript in a big team, it might be a little, what the fuck did he put there? Does he want a string? Does he want an integer? Does he want my soul? What the fuck does my colleague want? If you don't want to type any part of your app, you can just use any as a type. You don't have to have some strict rules in order to adopt TypeScript, because it seems it may seem like that in the beginning you may think oh I need to type literally everything no 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 you can make your TypeScript configuration like very re relaxed and you can start adopting it from one place to another place to another place and so on which still doesn't make it an easy task all right you're still gonna struggle you know it's a totally different language it's not just about adding strings and adding numbers and adding array types and so on whenever you have some complex logic in your JavaScript because it's JavaScript. Like, let's say you have an, a function that takes a certain type of object, maybe it modifies some of the properties, but it returns another type, which is merging few objects. 
In order for you to type that properly, you have to know your TypeScript, like your partials, your this, your that. Now I was fortunate enough because I, I'm lazy to go on Stack Overflow. I'm just asking people on Twitter and people were kind enough to answer with all the solutions. If you don't have anyone to ask, you may stumble upon a roadblock, upon a roadblock and a roadblock and a roadblock and it might turn you off TypeScript and you might say, ah, oh, fuck it, you know, I'm just not gonna adopt it. It's not worth it. So you can do two things here. Find a couple of thousand followers, just buy them off a Chinese, Russian website or something and then ask them about TypeScript. They're gonna be like, what the fuck is he talking about? You start with converting your first file to TypeScript. You go, you Google TypeScript tutorial, you find some free video, you start learning, you ask questions on Stack Overflow and slowly you're gonna get over the hump. You have to understand and you have to be patient. TypeScript is just like anything else. It has an initial hump that you have to get over and then after that it gets like really really easier and it helps you a lot but you have to before you get over the initial hump for no reason you're a solo developer you don't have big projects you don't have GraphQL you don't have mobx you don't have automatically generated top types is it worth it to go over that initial hump and just end with what more wasted time so I personally went over this initial hump with everything with react with redux Hello, darkness, man. Granted that Redux hump wasn't a hump, it was a freaking mountain, all right? So hiking that mountain, I had to take like three days off of work. What are you doing? Oh, I'm just learning Redux, you know? You're dehydrated, there's no water, there's nothing at the top, there's nothing at the bottom of that mountain, and you reach the bottom, and you're like, oh, I just made my project more complex. Let me just rewrite it in, in something else. And that's how I started using Mobex, okay? So you have to evaluate whether this hump is worth it because it's not an easy hump. It may seem easy, it's not easy. I got over it, now I'm enjoying TypeScript for this one project, all right? I'm not gonna go ahead and convert every project that I have in TypeScript because for most of them, it doesn't make sense. This one is really big, it's really complex. I'm using GraphQL, I'm using Mobex, it makes sense. Hopefully at the end, you're gonna end up with the same results as me and now I'm happy when I work on this project, seriously, because I don't have to open the browser as much, I don't have to peek at the console for errors, I don't have to actually see if something is broken in the browser. I can just look at my code editor and it's gonna tell me here you have a type mistake which means this thing is not gonna work at all which is great so for me getting over that initial hump was totally worth it granted it wasn't easy at all so it was a bunch of frustration it was a bunch of angry tweets you hate everyone you hate everyone that has anything to do with types ever you're like we're not gonna give up JavaScript, it's our language! You're not putting types in my language, ever! What, what? I'm gonna add a bunch of links and resources in the description, the things that I've learned about TypeScript. I'm not an expert. You can ask me something on Twitter, I'm gonna put the Twitter thingy here, and if I know something, I'm gonna help you. But I'm still struggling, I'm not an expert, I'm learning new things about TypeScript. It's, it, it has a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of things to learn. So, yeah. If you enjoyed this video, go and smash say smash don't say go and press the subscribe Thank button because I'm gonna post a screencast later where I show you how you can combine react TypeScript mobx and GraphQL together to get like this really smooth type experience from one end to another end and that's it thank you for watching and see you in the next one bye bye